This video was inspired by a post on a Reddit forum. I answered it and I thought, ah, this is a good demo to do for this channel. So, hope you enjoy it. There's split to rows, group by, there's all sorts of little functions and tricks in here. Let's go. Okay, so this is my data. Um, I wanna keep the yeses, so I wanna keep the orange yes, apple yes, but I wanna get rid of bananas because it hasn't got a yes. I also wanna get rid of pizza and pasta because there's no yes. Now, I'm not sure why the poster wanted the, the data like this, but we all have our needs for these sorts of things. So the actual output has to look like the data in column D here. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? Well, I tend to turn my data into a table to start with. So I'll just put a little header in. So items, control T brings up our um, table. And then the old right click, go down to get data from table slash range. And then we're into the wonderful world of Power Query. Okay, let's zoom in here a bit. Control Shift Plus if you need to zoom in. So first thing I'm gonna do is right click and split to rows. So right click, split column by delimiter, and I'm gonna use a comma because there's a comma between these. Now, comma gets auto detected, which is awesome. Now, under advanced options is rows. I really wish that you didn't have to expand out advanced options because people miss it. And it's such a useful function, split to rows. I love it. Click OK, there we go. We've got our thing split to rows. All right, and now I can just do a simple filter um, for like text contains, yes. So uh, contains and yes. Now, I could have maybe uppercased my text because what if somebody puts lowercase yes or all caps yes? Well, there's a hidden little parameter, and I've mentioned this on a few other um, videos I've done. If you do a comma after text.contains, there's the option to ignore the ordinal case, so comparer dot ordinal case ignore, or ordinal ignore case. I can never remember the name of it, but it's something like that. And that ignores whether it's uppercase, lowercase, whatever. Perfect. Right, um, and then I just want to get rid of those leading spaces that are annoying me. So right click, transform, trim, love a trim. Okay, now we're in the situation where um, I need to regroup them onto the single row, because if I go back and, and, and show you, I needed the output to be on the same rows. So I'm now gonna just add a little index, a little row identifier so that I can bring these together at the end. So I always go from one. I don't know why, I just prefer it to from zero. It just makes more sense to me. Um, and it makes no difference. But from one, two, three, okay. So if I just click through the steps, beautiful, I'm down there. So now I can do a group by to bring those items together. So right click on the index column, go down to group by, and I'm going to use the index. I'm just going to say, call it data and all, okay? So all rows. And there's our group. And inside these little tables is the items I need, okay? So apple and orange. That's just the one yes, okay? There's the two items. But I want to combine them onto a single row. And to do that, I'm going to use text.combine. So add column custom column, and we call this something like final. That'll do, good enough word. Um, and then the function is text dot combine, but never type the dot when you're doing Power Query. So text combine, there it is. Open the bracket. So what do I refer to? How do I refer to that text column, those items inside that little data table. So here's the items item. So what you can do, you can refer to data, that's showing here, but a little unknown hack is you can do another square bracket and refer to items. It doesn't even pop up in IntelliSense. 
and close the bracket. Oh, actually, actually I need to put a comma in uh, as the separator for the combining. I want to separate it between the words. OK, click OK. And we're done. <laughs> Pretty cool. OK. Um, let's just right click on this and remove the uh, remove other columns. Just change it to text just to finish off. And we can rename this, you know, with nice clean data or something like that. And then home, close and load two. And I'll just drop it as a table into this worksheet uh, just under here. Awesome. Click OK. And we're done. That's pretty cool. That's refreshable. You know, you just change the, add some more items or change those items, right click refresh. And for those of you who are saying, hey, you can do this in dynamic array Excel as well. Yes, you can. You can just do it in a formula. In fact, that's how I did this split. Now that's a crazy formula and I prefer playing around with Power Query, but you can do this stuff with dynamic arrays now. I'll put that formula in the notes uh, if anyone wants to play around with, and this file will be available to download too. So, Hope you enjoy it, hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Always check out my description for any updates and I will catch you in the next video.